We're, we're going to talk about the Dark Hotel APT. Um, we're going to do a quick intro, uh, but we're not going to do slides. This is a first time thing. It's more of a storytelling time. So no photographs, please. <laughs> Um, and for those of you unfamiliar with Dark Ho Hotel APT, um, it's, uh, I would say, a moderately sophisticated threat actor um, operating out of Southeast Asia. They attacked victims in three different ways. Um, one, they, they attacked possibly hundreds of thousands of targets in Japan and China um, over, well, by polluting P2P networks of interest. It's almost a water holing technique. Um, they also spearfished victims across the world. Um, and they spearfished with zero day. They'd actually pull out Adobe PDF zero day uh, a couple times a year. And we saw it at the beginning of 2014, which we reported to Adobe. They uh, closed up the zero day. Um, but it, it tells you about the level of actor you're dealing with. They can actually fall back to a zero day or, or ratchet up to a zero day if they need to get something that they want. And then finally, the most interesting of all their attacks was their unique ability to infiltrate hotel networks and you abuse these hotel networks to, um, to attack traveling executives and business people. Um, and we'll have all sorts of new details about how that worked. That's right. So uh, how it started, there was an advisory, I think, uh, a public, what was it? Yeah, oh, FBI the FBI advisory, right? It, yeah, there was an FBI advisory back in, uh, I believe it was 2011. 11. And they described, they were very vague um, about what was going on, but they said, oh yeah, travelers should be really careful because laptops are being attacked on hotel networks. Um, and when we contacted them multiple times, uh, the guys really didn't know who wrote that advisory back in 2011, so it wasn't particularly helpful, uh, it seemed. But it led us down uh, this path. There was a report, research partner. Yes. Uh, basically, we received a private report that one of the uh, delegations, one of uh, the travelers, uh, went to an Asian country, came back, and he got infection on his machine. And he was sure that it was coming from the hotel network. So he reported it back to us. We took the sample, started analyzing, and this is how we actually got very interested and excited about this particular threat actor. We started collecting other modules, and we had some technical description, but we were lacking a confirmation of these facts, because we wanted to catch the bad guys when they were infecting the visitors of the hotels. Otherwise, this story would be just another rumor which was not confirmed. We had to have a solid proof. And I wanted to ask you a question now. Something completely off topic. How many of you are afraid of darkness? Or were afraid of darkness when you were a child? Can you raise your hands? Do you remember those, you know, Creepy sounds coming from the rooms when you are left alone overnight or two at home and there are no parents and these strange sounds coming from the rooms that used to be safe for you during the, the, the day. Do you remember all those strange, mysterious creatures your, your brain imagined and the monsters that were living under the, the bed? So, I will tell you a story about my experience of staying in the dark room, being a grown up. So once upon a time, in the year of 2014, <laughs> I was invited to a student conference in South Korea, Seoul. Well, as a security researcher, I normally am not interested in such opportunities, to be honest with you. It might be a little bit impolite, but as a security researcher, as reverse engineers, we value our time a lot and we want to spend time on doing our job. So I would normally refuse and say, no, I'm busy. But that was a very strange coincidence when this offer was an invitation to a country that I was focusing on because we were working on the dark hotel story and 
the report that we had from our partner was about visiting a hotel in uh, South Korea, Seoul. So I agreed. I took this opportunity to go there and inspect myself, like, what's going on that network? So I traveled to Seoul, and when there was a day to check in, I actually booked a room in that hotel. I stayed in a different, like, cheaper hotel, but that one was a really expensive five-star hotel, luxurious hotel. We booked a room for a couple of nights, and when it was a, the day to check in, I, I checked the map. I found that it's not so far from the hotel I, I stayed at. So I decided to walk. I walked for about 15 minutes. I walked to the location, looking for the building that I remembered from the website. There was no such building. There were all kinds of buildings, like hospitals, schools, colleges, churches, shops, everything but no hotel at all. It just disappeared, vanished, vaporized. And I started wondering, after some research, I understood that it was kind of a map mistake. Basically, I searched for the name of the hotel, and the result were just two groups of, uh, of locations. So I think one of the locations that I chose was the, the earliest, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the nearest to, to, to my location. I, I decided to... Uh, take that one, but it was wrong. So I continued walking, and I felt like somebody is probably aware that I'm here, because they might be like, we started seeing calling domains of these actors, so they, they might have expect some kind of you know, physical approach to that location. So I, I, I checked if somebody follows me or not, and then I came to the hotel, I found it, and it was actually standing, standing out to a lower uh, story buildings, houses, private houses, and the hotel was like a solid, high uh, building made of uh, glass and steel was fully black, just like I imagined, like a dark hotel. So when I approached the hotel, it was like a main entrance, main hall was really, really big, great, like glassy uh, doors, and there were like very expensive cars passing by and picking up or dropping out some some uh, VIP people and executives. This is how I imagined it, actually. And then I entered the hotel. And do you think how it feels? It's like this. You are in a dark room with unknown enemy. And you don't know how dangerous he is. You do, not, you do not know what can be used against you. A cyber attack and no zero day, a physical assault. It can be anything. They are tracking you and you feel it. And you don't know like where is the trap for you. I was sure that the room that I booked was already prepared. It was so obvious they were they had access to the database. They knew that I checked in. I entered my room. There was no one. It was an unexpectedly large room, spacious, very luxurious. And then I, I brought another laptop with me with unpatched windows. And I started that. I connected to the network, expecting an attack. There was nothing. No attack against me. I tried again and again. Well, then I thought something is wrong here. Probably, probably just my name. They're not interested in attack and security research. I'm not a VIP after all. Or maybe, maybe what if I came too late? What if they shut down the operations? Oh, what is, what if I just am in the wrong hotel? Could that be a confusion? So, I was not sure, but this kind of a fear of meeting an unknown enemy in the darkness, it got replaced with the frustration of being unable to confirm this nice story, because this is what made this story standing out from all other APTs. This attack vector is completely different. So, 
I kept hope and I, I left uh, the laptop running overnight. I was not going to stay in that room. So I went back to my lousy hotel, switched on the light, <laughs> and enjoyed, you know, the known location. Uh, I collected some traffic. I expected that perhaps they will attack someone else on the network. When I came back next day, I rushed into extracting the executables from the network traffic. There was nothing. I was completely disappointed and frustrated by that. I spent some money for the room with no result. I lost some time, uh, a lot of time. So I came back with empty hands. It was, that was it. For several months, the research was in a kind of stagnation. I was not very enthusiastic about that. And then, maybe some of you know, I, I moved to Singapore. Now I live in Singapore, working at Interpol office, helping Interpol with cyber investigations. And giant cockroaches, my friend says. <laughs> Chasing cockroaches in Singapore, they're really giant. Like big APTs. <laughs> so, when I arrived to Singapore, I received the news from one of my colleagues. We added detection to one of the new modules of uh, Dark Hotel, and it popped up. Guess where? It was Singapore. So it was my chance. It was my chance to, to try it again. So I went to the hotel, decided not to spend company's money. So I went to the lobby, I tried the business center, I collected like traffic, I tried getting online, getting hit, no results. Business center was having just some crime work on it, but what could you expect from the public machines? It was totally unrelated to the dark hotel story. Um, I was disappointed again. And then I slept the night. The next day I woke up and I memorized something. It was something like there is some kind of a link between these two hotels. And it was coming from, I think it was coming from subconsciousness. I mean, I just had a feeling, maybe an intuition, whatever you call it. But I started looking and comparing the results I had, the screenshots I had from, different, uh, from two different hotels. And I quickly found that there is one thing that unites these two hotels. It was a company, a provider, servicing uh, networks, providing the Wi-Fi infrastructure to both hotels. It was the same name of the company. And that was my tiny catch that day. It was a spark in the darkness, in that dark room. I was really happy about that. I found the company, I found the company's profile, and we started the next week, we were just trying hard to approach the company through all possible means we had, through the CERT, through the, even up to the attorney general. We tried to contact the company and get in touch with them, to talk to them, because we did not believe they are involved. We thought they were compromised or attacked by these actors. And the infrastructure was used to deliver the malware. And one day, we were lucky. We got in touch with the head of the company, who was a fantastic person. I've never met anyone like him. Well, after all this experience in the dark room, he was kind of a man made of light who entered the room and poured the light everywhere to every single corner so that everything became clear, everything became so visible. He helped us a lot. He gave us access to infrastructure and let us run our tests. And this is how we made the story. The rest is, is history, basically. Yes, we found, we found nine different hotels in two countries. Now you know them. And that was it. So uh, in addition to those nine hotels in the two countries, we also um, were able to identify uh, hotels that were serving the malware in uh, Japan, in um, the US, uh, in, um, was it Indonesia? It was Hawaii. Hawaii, oh, sorry. Uh, the US. <laughs> and 
um, and uh, the interesting thing about the attacker is immediately following the report, uh, well, in 2014, really, um, we hadn't seen much hotel activity from these guys. It was all spear phishing and zero day spear phishing. But they, uh, they continued on into this year with more spear phishing activity. So the actor is still um, operating and the actor is still attacking targets around the world. Um, so we'll be keeping an eye on these networks and hopefully we can send uh, Vitaly back to some dark hotels and scare him silly. Thank uh, you. <laughs> but let me add you one more thing. Basically, uh, as a result of collaboration with the company, uh, of course, uh, we helped them, we pointed at the issue and they they reapplied, they, they resought, they reviewed their security policies, security measures. They, they uh, hardened their infrastructure, they changed the policies, password usage, everything, certificates, everything was in place uh, since, since that sad attack. So they definitely improved, uh, they are looking into, they are aware of possibility of you know, such attacks now. We are working with them closely to to help others any potential future issues. And I would like to personally thank the gentleman made of light who unfortunately has to remain anonymous uh, due to some business constraints, so to say. But I would like you to join me in thanking this gentleman because he is here in this room right now with us. Chief Executive Officer of this company. Let's thank him with applause. Questions? Yeah. Uh, so, does anybody have any questions about uh, Dark Hotel? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so when you said that you found other hotels in the US and other countries, but you didn't find any infections there? Or Go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, just a real quick answer. Um, the, uh, the tr there were traces on other hotel networks that led us to believe the iframes and the method of attack was being used in those countries. Detections, detections yeah. from our product. But it's definitely not coming from the same company. So we believe that these actors might be actually uh, having access to other companies as well. Okay. <coughs> Is there an effort to reach out to you know other, other companies? I mean, everybody has you know, Wi-Fi's and so forth, so you're vulnerable essentially everywhere. And, and since we're at the JW Marriott, how's the JW Marriott? Uh, he's, he's, I'm, I'm sorry, could, the, the question is, have we reached out to other companies? Yeah, have you reached out to other you know, companies, not just hotels, but you know, everybody, every place you go. I mean, Starbucks, for example, everybody, free Wi-Fi, right? So you're potentially vulnerable everywhere you go. Right. Um, and then, you know, since we're at the JW Marriott, have you checked this out? It, it may happen everywhere, including Starbucks. So uh, I would not actually trust the public Wi-Fi at all. Uh, so you need to understand how these guys operate it. You need to know the TTPs. So the way how they uh, infected you, they offered you an update for your Google Chrome or Flash Player. So you just see a pop-up when you connect to the network, you try to uh, authorize, you enter your last name and the room number, and you get a pop-up of uh, Adobe Flash Player. If you install that, you're infected. That's how they work. If you see that in Starbucks, don't update. Don't update in the public Wi-Fi. That's it. I think we are out of time. If you have some more questions, we are happy to answer that after. Thank you very much.